Good morning. Welcome to Treetop Flight, where I'm documenting the build of my RANS S21 outbound. This is episode four in my series, which covers the build of the horizontal stabilizer. So far, I've put in 66 build hours on the plane, uh, which does include about 22 hours of inventory. I'm not sure how this compares with other builders, as I usually don't see that included in the videos I've watched. Uh, but I do know that I'm taking extra time to research a lot of the practices and I'm double and triple checking some of the manual pages before pulling the trigger on assembling certain parts of the plane. I also know that a second build would be considerably faster. With that, let's jump into the horizontal stabilizer build. The uh, first step that I'm going to do in constructing the next part, which is a horizontal stabilizer, is to lay out all the parts that I need for each section of the build. Uh, the first part is to construct the frame. Uh, I'm going through laying out, checking off from the, from the parts list, uh, and looking at the diagrams to identify uh, which parts I'm going to need to put the frame together for the stabilizer. Uh, the first step is to flute your ribs. And that means is when you get the rib from the factory, they've got a bend to them. And what you do is using a pair of fluting pliers, this is all new to me, but I looked it up a little bit, is you crimp the edges starting at the end and you move them, you crimp them slightly and that will flatten each side down so that you, you work your way up and down the rib with the fluting pliers and then you flip it the other side and it flattens the rib so that they're, they don't have a curve in them. So you got to do each one individually and you got a bunch of them to do. It's got a big bag of them here. So this will take a little bit of time, but that's what this is all about. So start fluting. Uh, ribs are crimped. If you look at the ribs carefully, you can kind of see the, the ripple going down from the crimping. That's what straightens the, the rib out. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that this process is also used in the vertical stabilizer ribs. And I didn't mention that in the previous video, but you learn the technique uh, from the vertical stabilizer, and this is carried on through these ribs. The, the horizontal spar is clecoed. A couple observations is some of the clecos come in from the outside, and others are coming in from the inside. And this is per the, the manual, so you got to be careful of that. Uh, there are some doublers that go inside that you got to make sure the holes line up on the right side because not both sides are holed. And the aft spar and rear spar look very similar, but they are a little bit different because of, of a hinge mounting bracket holes. So you got to be careful to line those up. We're riveting the horizontal stabilizer and these rivets are really tight to get a rivet gun in there. So I've Googled a couple options. The one I'm fig figuring out that's working best for me, and I'm getting some flat rivets in, is to use a wedge. There's a little piece of aluminum wedge that after you put the rivet in, you stick this aluminum wedge over the mandrel of the rivet, push it tight, and then you can actually bend the mandrel uh, about 15 degrees to get your rivet gun in there and then pop it at an angle and this uh, wedge holds the rivet flush against the, uh, the the spar and gets you a flat contact. I'm going to cover two quick things. Uh, first, these are the stainless steel rivets that uh, rivet in the hinge to the spar. Uh, a lot of discussion about dipping rivets whenever you have mixed metals, stainless steel to aluminum. Um, there is corrosion that occurs when the two metals come in contact, so this is recommended by many, not by all. Uh, so I am dipping. I just It's a Rust-Oleum metal primer, so I'm dipping them in a primer. The other thing is I made a mistake, and I want to point this out because it's easy to happen. Uh, in riveting the spar, you've got this doubler that you've got this whole line of rivets that goes real fast. But you've also got these larger holes, which is where you rivet the, the hinges using the stainless steel rivets. And the directions say, do not rivet these to the doubler, because these are the stainless steel. Well, I'm zipping along here, putting in rivets, and sure enough, I, uh, I riveted in the holes for the hinges. So I've got to drill those out. No big deal. Four, four rivets come out, four new stainless steel go in. But just a, 
I, I'll let you know in case someone else comes across that. While I'm waiting for my dipped rivets, stainless steel rivets to dry, uh, to put my hinges in, uh, I'm going to start working on the skins. I took out the stabilizer skins. The first step, they say, is to take off these tabs. There's one on each end of the skin. On each skin, you can see the tabs here. I'm just going to use my Dremel uh, with a nice metal cutter on it. Take those down and then buff them a little bit with a stone. The uh, first part of the skin installation is you're going to Clico and then rivet uh, the inspection cover ring underneath. And you can see after you rivet the inspection cover on, then you're going to put some uh, tinnermans on and then you're going to pan screw the inspection cover onto the tinnermans. So that should go pretty quick. The next step uh, is to Clico the skins to the spars and ribs and you have to Clico both sides. You've got to lay them down on uh, some 2x4s or 2x2s, whatever, so that the measurement is the same. Uh, it's important to note that one side of the uh, frame is not pre-drilled uh, on the final spar. You have to drill and match the holes on the final side. So what I did is I put the top side, uh, the one with the five inch inspection covers, the side with the holes drilled, so that when I flipped it over, uh, I only had to Clico at once, then I'll drill out this, you notice this final line is not drilled down this spar, and also down this spar it's not drilled. And the reason is, after you get it over onto the second side, you then level it, and then weight it to be level all the way down. And I use these shims uh, all the way down to keep my level straight. And even after you start at one end and you bag to the other end and you get level, then you come back and the, now the first end is a little bit out of level because you've been pushing on the other end. So you got to kind of go back and forth and get it level on both ends. These Clicos here in the, the end rib is what you put your level on uh, to determine level. And once you get it all level on the second side, now the step is to drill out uh, your holes in the spars. And then you got to take it all apart, uh, deburr, sand, clean out the inside, put it all back together again, uh, and then you can start your riveting. Okay, I'm going to cover a new skill set that needed to be learned at this part. Uh, this is the section of the stabilizer that is going to connect to the tail uh, part of the fuselage. Because of that, the manual is calling for uh, the skin to be dimpled and the spar to be countersunk because you're putting flush rivets in there for a fairing to go on later. Uh, with that, um, Rance has given you some tools to do this. There's a pretty good video put out by Kit Planes, uh, Magic Mike or Metal Mike, I guess it's Metal Mike, and he goes into the process of dimpling and countersinking. It's worth watching if you haven't done this before. I have not, so this is where I've learned that skill. Rance provided in their toolkit uh, a, a bit stop and then a, a counter sink, sink bit. You've got to use the right one for the size rivets you're doing. And they also provided this nice, uh, it's actually a riveter, a hand riveter, but by putting different bits in the end, uh, you can do dimpling with it. So again, I won't go into a lot of uh, instruction about it because I'm new to it. Watch the video I kit planes and recognize that you've got to dimple and countersink this, uh, this part of the, the structure. I've drilled the final line of holes, took all the skins off, cleaned, deburred, cleaned everything out. I dimpled the aluminum where the fairing is going to go where we need flush rivets. And I also countersunk the spar underneath it. Dimpling and sparring, I mentioned, is a skill set, but it, it's not that hard. And once you learn it, it worked out. Then I put the skins back on and re -clicoed. I did have a little bit of twist when I checked my level. So I've had to weight the sides differently to get myself into level. Uh, but I, it worked. I, I shimmed and weighted, and I got the wing into level. And now I'm going to start riveting. Again, keeping in mind that there are three different sets, three or four, 
sets of rivets because you've got two different flush rivets based on the amount of aluminum. And then you've got different rivets based on, again, the number of layers of aluminum they're, they're going through. So you got to keep an eye on your rivet chart uh, when you start your final rivet. The horizontal stabilizer is completely riveted on both sides. Uh, I did leave the wing tips off as I'm probably going to order some aftermarket carbon fiber tips. So I left the holes there unriveted for the carbon fiber tips. There was one kind of gotcha on this that I want to point out to future builders. In the parts and skin diagram, uh, when they talk about the rivets, you have to be real careful where the rivets switch over. The number threes at this end are your smallest rivets and they go in all the ribs. But if you notice along the spars, they switch from a seven to an eight, which is a 42 to a 43, which is where your doubler starts and it's on the third rib in. Down on this side, they show the 43s, the number eights, going in at the fourth rib in. But the doubler actually starts at the three. I had a, a forum discussion and they said you can't always go by the counting the number of holes, which is kind of what I was doing. If something seems off, figure out why they're switching the rivets. And the reason is because the doubler starts right here. Um, and I, if you go back to the frame diagram, you'll see that where the doubler starts. And that's where the number uh, 43s come in is at the doubler, which as you can see is the third rib in, not the fourth rib in, as this chart is kind of indicating. My horizontal stabilizer is finished, and I'll wrap this video up with a couple final thoughts. In talking about rivets, other builders recommended that I get a grip gauge, which allows you to measure the thickness of your material and indicate the correct rivet to use. Aircraft Spruce had these for about 10 bucks. This takes a lot of the confusion out of the proper rivet decision and helped me out a lot as I've run into that a couple times now. The horizontal stabilizer build time was 29 hours for me. Again, I'm not sure if that's high or low based compared to other builders. That was just my build time. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm working on my elevator now, and I'll get that episode out shortly. Thanks a lot for watching. Dream it and build it.